Hey guys, what is up? Alex Brody here and welcome to Tabletop Talk Session 1, How to Get Started. I think this is probably one of the biggest issues for most people trying, trying to actually get into tabletop gaming. Because there is, let's say, a few barriers for entry. A lot of people are worried about not having friends, not having people to play with, not having people to show them how to play. And all those kinds of things. So basically for this video, I'm trying to give a few examples of basically how you can get started. And I'm basically going to try to separate them into two categories. So first we're going to focus more on like your board games, card games, that kind of side. And then after we're going to focus on your like TTRPGs or pen and paper RPGs, whatever you want to call them. Because unfortunately they are treated somewhat differently. People do tend to separate them in categories based on what maybe events they're having, what you want to play, or even sometimes what like audience you're targeting certain things to. But the first thing I'd like to say is generally the one thing I would like to tell people is even if you're a bit worried, the one thing I would say is that the tabletop community is actually generally very nice, in person at least. You're not talking about those online communities where everyone's a keyboard warrior. But generally when you actually go to these places, go to gaming shops, go to gaming stores, go to gaming events, but more often than not people actually deal with super nice super nice people will take the time to talk to you to show you things like just for example the other day well the other day i said the other day it was actually quite a while ago at this point thanks quarantine but we were at our local gaming stores game board day and they host a monthly gaming day and they have a discount on each day where basically you get a little bit of a discount on anything in store so more often enough i'd like to go take a walk through the store See what there is, see if there's any cool things, and be like, stare at something like, oh, you know, it's, it's on discount. Because discounts is discount, and people are suckers for discount. But anyway, so that day we tried the DC Deck Builder game, really enjoyed it. So I was walking through the store, and they had a little section where they had all the different variations. We had tried, I suppose, the original, or the starter pack, or the base, or whatever the first one was, with the traditional one. But by that point, they already had, I'd say, at least three four maybe five versions selling and basically was looking through them reading the backs kind of trying to get a feel for each one and someone was actually also doing the similar thing walking through the aisles and he actually saw me looking at all these and was like you know do you mind do you need some help so he's like oh no so, you know just looking at the games like oh no they he actually really enjoys them and I would have been interested if in him actually explaining to me the differences you know telling me what makes the one different to the other, or if the one is expansion for the base, or if this is a completely different style of gameplay, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, actually, sure. So it was, you know, something I was interested in. If I was going to drop a bit of money on something, I'd like to get the one that suits what I'd like to be playing. So he basically proceeded to run me through each of the different versions and how they're kind of separate, how they're different, and how, I suppose, the meta of each game is slightly different and what each one's more gravitated towards. Whereas one might be more gravitated towards accumulating a certain kind of currency or certain kind of thing, the other one might be gravitated towards a different, a uh, completely different mechanic, while still all using the same core base play. So basically, he walked me through all of them, told me all the differences, and really nice, super nice guy. And I'd also like to say he wasn't trying to sell me anything. This wasn't someone who actually worked at the store. This was just some random guy I'd never interacted with, never met before, and he basically took the time to explain the differences because. Oh, he enjoyed the game and I showed some interest in it. So there's one thing I'd like to preface with saying, the gaming community tends to be extremely nice and welcoming to new people, to people wanting to learn, to people wanting to know how to do things. So don't always be put off of, oh, I don't have a big enough group. Um, I only have this one person to take with me. I don't even have maybe anyone to take with me. And just kind of take a leap or even find out, you know, but with that, I think let's actually jump into the first section, seeing as we've already touched on board games. So basically the one big thing that I think, or at least how I got started was, I was never that into board games, to be honest. I had obviously, like every other person in the entire world, played Monopoly, played 30 Seconds, played those basic ones, and be like, hey, these are cool, you know, these are fun. Maybe threw in a game of Risk there once or twice. And actually the person I was seeing, still am seeing, um, she was, very very into board games she really really enjoyed them and also would be something nice if i could find a place where we could go play board games because unfortunately most of you that have board games or look at buying board games they are very expensive getting a full-on board game you're looking at a lot of money i was going to say looking at easily over a grand but that's in rand so i suppose in dollars 
I don't know, hundred dollars, fifty dollars, about somewhere around there. Most of your big board games tend to be over there, and even some card games reach a similar price point. So with that, I thought, you know what, let me look for a place. And a couple of Google searches later, and it's actually also a good tip, Google search that and have a look and see. But anyway, having a couple of Google searches later, I actually found there was, at that stage, an online store that actually ran a monthly board game. Like board game day, board game weekend, at that stage was still the day. Where basically as a distributor of board games and a seller of board games, they had hundreds of demo models sent to them or demo board games and they decided that they would once a month rent out a hall and basically you paid a little entrance fee and you had access to all these games and on and on the day specials and stuff like that and actually if you are South African and specifically Joburg area they actually have a standalone store currently they also have an amazing online store and prices are actually really good at least I found but more importantly the people that run it actually really good and it's called timeless board games i will drop a link down in the description below if you guys want to have a look for anyone that is south african and watching the video but basically they evolved from that to now having a standalone store and in this new space they basically host a monthly board game weekend this time from friday to saturday and if you do want to pop in during their normal shopping hours you can pop in and play games with that also found that there was another store this time not as close to me a bit further away um, that also does a similar board game event weekend where they encourage people to come and play their demo games they have but also bring their own, interact with people and basically the biggest thing about these days is it's a way that you can interact and meet people. There's a lot of emphasis on basically a community and meeting new people, interacting with new people, finding new friends and basically finding a group of people you can basically play board games with and I mean if we in South Africa where we don't really have to be honest that many gaming stores or that big of a community at least not physically especially one that is so easily found but the few that I have interacted with being really great and it's something that is kind of promoted where even smaller stores I mean there's one out in Pretoria so terms of time about maybe an hour hour and a bit drive from where i am and they do a similar thing they're much smaller stores they have much small smaller scale of games to choose from when you do go for these game board days board game days sorry but they do encourage the sense of community the sense of meeting new people and stuff like that and obviously as a store they look to profit from it but the service they offer you is often amazing i mean for example um, if i take timeless board games the one i spoke about before they have at this point i think catalogued well over 500 board games and demo models to basically pick up and play and you pay 120 bucks so conversion from dollars less than 10 dollars for an entire weekend friday saturday and sunday that you can basically go all day they do i think basically fridays i think till uh from 10 till midnight Saturdays I think is from 10 till 10 and Sundays from 9 till 6 or something but that's a, a lot of time you can get to interact with board games and you're paying almost nothing I mean a movie ticket costs you more than that entrance and you're getting basically three days of entertainment so I would say that is one big thing to look into is just joining these days attending one I mean Relatively, it's not that much money to pay even if you're going on your own and just see what mechanics they have in place for people going on their own. I know, for example, the one that I attend, they allow for people to basically pick up flags. So you basically get a little flag, you put the flag on your table and the flag says players. Basically what that means is you're looking for a group or you're looking for people to play with or perhaps the group is looking for more people. They only came with maybe two players and they're looking for a third or fourth to try this new game they saw. So with that, I would say just have a Google search, look at these places, often maybe sometimes just pick up the phone and phone them and ask if you do find a local game store that sells these things. Because sometimes people are terrible at actually advertising things and getting the right social media coverage or the right even Google pages out there. I mean, when I'm referring to the one that I attend, Timeless, they don't have much coverage among a lot of 
the places people will go to to look for this kind of information. They basically rely on their Facebook page to do most of their advertising, which isn't that heavily followed. So they rely on a lot of word of mouth. And just like many of the other ones I came across, they also don't really do much advertising of it, but you can sort of find them on forums, on certain blogs, certain web posts where people have actually experienced these things. So I would say reach out to a lot of the local board game stores and just ask. Because a lot of them are like, oh no, yeah, we do have that, that it's on a X, Y, or Z night, but they don't actually publicize it with many, many things, whether it be board gaming or other events that they actually do. And while we're on top of board gaming, I think one of the other big events is if you're looking to get into card games, especially the competitive card games, you know, Pokemon, Magic, that kind of things. I think those are two that are slightly more popular here. I don't know what's popular perhaps in other countries, but most game stores actually run these days where people come in and sit and play. Much like the store I was referring to, um, Timeless, they run a magic night on a Friday night almost every week where guys basically come in, they don't, really have to, they don't even think they charge them entrance currently, and think they should because they are using their venues or rather late, but they basically allow them to play magic. And with that, I know a lot of other stores around the area do the same thing. They have magic tournaments, Pokemon tournaments, but generally what I've found, locally, terribly publicized. They can't find information on the website, can't find information on their Facebook pages, on the social media. So once again, pick up a phone and ask. I mean, it what, costs you almost nothing to ask the person on the other side, and you might get hours and hours of entertainment out of it, so why not? The one thing I would also say, especially when I say one of the biggest things is finding these board game days locally, or finding people that host these, is it does take, it is overwhelming. More often than not, when you arrive at these things, like the first experience I had, both of us basically walked in and there were, and at that stage, they were still in a hall, on the, in the hall, they basically had literally a stage and on the stage, they had a bunch of trestle tables. On the trestle tables, you had your odd 500 board games. Where do you start? What do you pick? How do you play? What's going on? Luckily for us, they had a sort of organizational system where they actually separated them. So basically they had them separated by what they thought was complexity to play from easy to difficult. And that allowed some people, if you're looking for something a bit more simpler, jump something a bit more simple, something more difficult, jump something more difficult. But also was very overwhelming where you have so many different perhaps RPs that even relate to you. So you see um, a lot of rings and you're like, oh shit, I love me some Lord of the Rings. I'm gonna play that one. Or you see Mansions of Madness and you're like, oh, Cthulhu based. I love me some Cthulhu. Let me go for that one. And it can be very overwhelming. So with that, I would also like to say, perhaps see if you can get a catalog of games they have and look into them, possibly even research them, possibly even YouTube them. I know personally what happened after the first time and being completely overwhelmed and basically struggling through reading rules and trying to find more difficult games to play because, oh, they look more fun, ended in me spending a lot of time watching YouTube videos, YouTube tutorials about how to play certain games. I would follow their website and see, oh, cool, you know what? I think Arkham Horror looks really cool. I think Mansion Madness looks really cool. But they are games that are complex, first of all, to set up to play and to understand. So literally what I did then was I went picked up specifically Arkham Horror and I'm like that sounds really cool. Theme I really like. Sat down with the game, proceeded to open it up. We look at we took a look at millions of pieces, thick, thick rule book with many pages to read, and decided no I'm gonna put that back. But I didn't give up basically I got a hold of a bunch of YouTube videos and the next time we went I watched some YouTube videos and I understood how to play it. And with that it made it a lot easier. So I would also encourage you to take the time to also do that. To watch these YouTube videos to find not just perhaps how to plays but also ways that you can see what you would enjoy. So for example picking up something like Arkham Horror and being like I don't like this whole pseudo RPG-esque rolling kind of mentality where the game is designed to put you under pressure. It's not a fun, well it's still a fun experience, but it's not a, I should say, it's not about a happy-go-lucky approach. It's about you could possibly lose this. You are quite likely in your first playthroughs to lose the game because that is how the game is designed, for you to get better, for you to learn, for you to play a game. 
and basic first every playability value. So I would say if it's worth just taking a few looks at YouTube videos, even if it's not necessarily how to play, even just gameplay, watch gameplay for five minutes. If you're like, this isn't for me at all, before you even really understand the rules, just the setting and how the game mechanics work don't appeal to you, don't play it, don't pick it up. Once you maybe were more well versed and think, oh, you know what, I wanna try a few new games, I wanna try a few different things, then by all means, go for it. But with that as well, I'd like to also say that one of the things, even though I spoke about the community being so great, a lot of people are worried about having friends to take with them for these experiences. Because at the end of the day, no one truly wants to just go in there alone and pray they have mechanics in place for you to meet people or for someone to take you under the wing and show you what's going on. And with us, I'd say more often than not, just ask your friends. More often than not, if you have one or two friends you've been good friends with and you're just like, hey dude, look, I really wanna go try this out, just come through, please. They'll more often just be like, suck it up and just do it to you as a favor. I'll just be that kind of friend. If not, and you don't just really want to be like, hey, look, I really want to try this once to go with me, just please come with. Settle on bribery and corruption. Be like, hey, dude, look, we're going to go through to this place. They have, I will bring the snacks. I'll buy you drinks for the day. I'll grab us lunch. Not for the night, spring, be like, hey, you know what? Getting free lunch out of it. It looks like it could be kind of fun. Let me try it out. And, but I think one of the big things to explain to people as well, and I think one of the things that helped for me to get more friends to come with me was actually explain what it is. When you tell someone, oh, it's this board game day. They're like, oh, cool. We're going to go play some Monopoly in this weird place in this hall. Like, yeah, okay, whatever. I'll suck it up and do it. And actually a friend who decided, you know what? She was going to join us. And she was like, fine, I'll sort of you know what, I'll just come with because you've asked me to come two times and I said no the first time. And she was kind of taken back by, Jesus, okay, no, there's like hundreds of games to pick from and basically anything we could play, we can basically play here. And it's a very different setting, a very different style, it's very open. With that, I would also say, maybe find out the rules. If you know that you have the kind of friends that do enjoy the drinks or enjoy that kind of beer and pretzels kind of style, why not? Can you bring drinks? Can you bring food? Do they sell? Do they offer? And just go with it. I mean, if it takes being like, hey, look, oh, you know what? They have, we'll go through, buy some snacks, get a six pack of beer, enjoy it, whatever it might be. But often than not, it also helps people just be like, oh, you know what? There's going to be drinks, going to be food, going to be a bit more entertaining. Oh, I'll suck it up and go with. With that as well, I think if for whatever reason, you are genuinely restricted by no places around you have no gaming shops there is absolutely nothing and you want to get into tabletop gaming then i would say go to one of the i suppose bigger resorts which is to actually look and buy games and with that i would say once again youtube is your best friend not necessarily even just youtube but the internet look for reviews look into games you'd like to play find out as much information you can as possible Look into gameplay, look into rules, watch gameplay, watch videos, read people's reviews until you find something that you think you'd actually enjoy. Then fork out the cash for it. I mean, more often than not, you can get games on sale that aren't terribly priced. And you just kind of have to roll with it. And from there, it also is a huge learning experience. If you get to pick up your first game and you pick up a worker placement game and you thought, oh, it would be cool. And you found out that, you know what, this worker placement game is not for me. I don't enjoy it, my friends don't enjoy it, we don't just enjoy it. Maybe that's not for you. Yes, you made a fuck up, but you learned a lot from that and you can grow in that regard. And if not just that, also secondhand stores, um, places where people have sold old games, you know, clearing out ceilings full of crap and sometimes people get rid of things. Um, and you can sometimes find games for a bargain there. A lot of old RPG books and stuff you can often find in bargain bins at shops where perhaps you know you're living with your parents you moved out you have this old box of shit it's now let's be realistic if you're talking about like old D&D books 20 30 years later they're getting rid of that shit maybe give it to goodwill maybe get rid of it and the next person can pick it up for next to nothing because the person at the shop Jenny doesn't know if this is worth anything so I would say have a look at it as well you can generally find stuff on the cheap if not, there are obviously digital options as well. I mean, uh, currently, Tabletop Simulator is a great option. 
especially with current circumstances it is on steam it obviously does cost you a bit and i know a lot of games have been set up to run and work on tabletop simulator and currently there's a slew of youtube videos where previously people used to play obviously games in person now resorted to playing these games on tabletop simulator so i mean channels like um achievement hunter dice breaker rooster teeth all those people all those people people have resorted to playing games on tabletop simulator because well quarantine can't be in personal space anymore so that is also another option to look at that isn't i suppose as costly but it does obviously require a pc and with that it requires you getting friends in on the fun trying them to also buy the game online connection and blah 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 but with that i would say one of the biggest pieces of advice to say about how to get started is approach local game stores and just ask and sometimes if you do reach out to them often or not there might be someone actually using their venue to play board games when what i mean by this is a lot of gaming stores are also venues they encourage people to come through and spend time there because they know so people spending time there they're more likely to build a community build attachments in place and buy things so i would say is also reach out to them and ask a lot of them might know oh you know what on a thursday or wednesday these guys come through and they play games or whatever it might be or they know x y z person or this person or that person kind of thing and they might be able to help you out with that so one of the biggest things to say is appeal to first of all online community and look for people's reputable information people helping out i mean if it's that easy for me to do a cursory google search and find a few venues locally for me that actually do it i highly doubt in a lot of other countries where there's so much more of a emphasis on that kind of culture for it to be that difficult to find and more often than not most people will know about local gaming stores just go to them and ask with that as well like i said if you are resorting to the buy a game also try and look for something that's maybe a bit lighter something that's a lot more easy to convince friends to play not something you're like okay guys 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 i know you've never played a board game before but you're going to sit with me for three hours while i explain to you how it's going to work before we even start playing those games are generally harder to convince new players to play some people into completely our oh, soul in them i think it also comes from perhaps having a bit of a pc gaming background where i like the challenge i like more in depth i like more options I don't just want to be playing Uno. That's just how it is. So guys, I think if you do have any more questions or even any more input, leave them down in the description below for tabletop gaming. Or if you know perhaps even any venues in your area, just literally say Johannesburg, Times Board Games, link to a website or link to a page where they host the events. Or even just type there, hey, look, this place in this area, Wednesday nights between this time and this time, board game days, 10 bucks or whatever it might be of your particular currency so people can understand and then with that i think we're going to move on to rpgs now the reason i chose to separate these is because even though they, i'm going to be repeating a lot of the same information and i'll kind of gloss a bit more over they are often treated as completely separate entities when it comes to planning events and games and things like that i mean even when i want to have friends over for gaming i'm like hey guys cool we're going to play D &D. we're going to play call of cthulhu we're going to play poker roll we're going to play whatever it might be but hey guys why don't you come up with some rpgs and we'll play some board games and we'll do this because more often than not people treat board games as one event and rpgs as one event even though often they appeal to the same crowd the same type of people now with this as well the first thing i will say again is your local game stores now Local game stores will generally have RPG days. They will be looking to sell a lot of their own RPG stuff. I mean, if you look at it, your D&D stuff isn't cheap. Getting all your books, getting all your equipment, getting dice trays, dice towers, and God, dice, and those pretty dice that you have 10 sets of, but you have probably never rolled that one die. But it looked so cool. Or it didn't look cool, but you just bought it because you needed to some dice when you wanted to start playing. And then you saw all the cool ones. And that plain red and white die you bought from your first set two years ago has been rolled in one game so far. Personal story. Um, and just appeals to them, they generally have RPG days once again. Timeless board games, my local board game store. 
they hosted an RPG day. So basically from the big pool they got from their board game days, they saw there was basically a community out there that would be willing to host a board game day. So the way they did it was they actually partnered with um, Dum Dum Da, which is a type of Twitch channel, if I'm not mistaken, as well as organization that looks to a lot of RPGs, educate the community about RPGs as well. And they basically brought in seven or eight of their DMs and they hosted one shots. So they had a morning session where they hosted one set of one shots and an evening session where they hosted another set of one shots. And you look to play about three to four hours of pre-gen characters and basically taught you the basics as well as how to play through the game and what to expect kind of thing. And once again, very nice people, very happy to include people. And that, I think for a lot of people, especially frequenting this place as much as I do for as long as I've been going, for as long as I've been going, you see a lot of people from there actually start playing their own games. I mean, in this situation, when I first started going, which I'll get to how I actually got into RPG games and wanted to go to one of these days in the first place, in a second, but basically, I decided to start going and I was lucky enough that my girlfriend was like, cool, whatever, she'll suck it up, she'll come with me, she'll do it for me. And they took us through a bunch of these games and it was great. Really enjoyed it and it was really fun. And from there, a lot of the people that started going to these days actually started looking for more permanent groups. Perhaps starting DMing, GMing on their own, for their friends, for people they met there. I mean, um, one of the gents we met there and he was there with his daughter and basically they played through and the next time we saw them at one of the board game days which was i think only two or three weeks later they joined a full-time group at a gaming shop close to them that they didn't actually know around gaming days but they thought you know what let me pick up the phone phone them and ask and they found a store close to them that was i think maybe 10 to 15 minutes away whereas time for them is an hour hour and a half drive and they play now weekly and I think for, that is such a great way for how people to get started but also a great way of just saying pick up the phone and ask your local gaming store because more often than not they do these things and they look to grow the community but they started basically playing these games they started basically playing week to week and they kind of took off for them but now one of the things I will say is with the in-person does tend to flow a lot smoother it's a lot easier to explain and people get a lot, lot more hands-on experience but if that's not a possibility for you and you really can't there's great online communities that play completely online i mean there's of course especially given our current circumstances there's people that play online with friends and people that play online with complete strangers if you look at roll 20 which i've been using to basically run rpgs for my friends online um there are tons of people just posting hey i'm running through lost minds of um, Fandalva, looking for players i'm running this campaign looking for players i want to start my own thing looking for players and you basically just go in they give you the time slots to tell you who to apply to who to speak to who to ask and you basically through a few short messages you might be in a game you might start playing that week that day they tell you what time slots they're looking and if you know you can commit in something you would be really interested in doing speak to them and ask just be like hey dude look i want to apply it's literally it is quite literally a click of a button to apply for these things and someone will get back to you i know roll 20 is not the only online platform it's one i've dealt with personally i know there are a lot of other online communities that do it reddit has a great DD community there's i think an actual reddit for looking for a group which will help a lot of new players out there are people who play solely on discord that they do complete text chains of games where they don't even have a mark. They literally type out every single thing that they choose to do and it might slow the game down, but for you, if you kind of don't have the right technological equipment, you don't have a mark, that's perfect for someone. I mean, something like that you can literally do on your phone. Most phones now have internet connections and it is low data, low cost saving. If you don't have unlimited internet bands, if you don't have great Wi-Fi, sending a bunch of text messages on a text thread doesn't cost you that much in data. So it's, it's a feasible way for people who don't have access to a lot of technology as well as access to certain uh, certain functions as well as low data. 
Because that once again, I'd say, just give it a Google for online if you really set, if you really have your heart set on online and you can find no game stores near you. The other option is just learning to DM. If you know, you've got some friends and we'll talk on how to, or less, how to convince your friends in a bit and some tips and tricks about how to get your friends into it and how to convince them to actually just take a chance. Next, now is just learning to, learning to play. I mean, if you look at it more often than not, so many of these RPG systems understand a lot of people are tentative to approach them, are tentative to get into them. Don't know how to play, don't know where they're coming from, don't know the community they're coming from. They will offer so many free, absolutely free, quick start rule sets. Call of Cthulhu has a great quick start rule set with a solo campaign that basically is kind of more of a choose your own adventure kind of style where you can play through on your own and understand more or less how the mechanics of the game works. It's actually really great if you want to be a GM or a keeper, specifically for Call of Cthulhu. You kind of can get a grip on some of the stuff that they do. So with that as well, I would say um, that is another option. Pick up literally quick start rules. d and is quick start rules. Call of Cthulhu is quick start rules. Valiant Universe is quick start rules. That was very... I know there was one but out of nowhere, especially Valiant, which a lot of people don't know about. But it's a system I actually have some interest in and I'm looking actually starting to maybe read up on it to actually try a Valiant campaign. Thank you, Tapa RPG and Valiant Comics. Like, actually have an awesome comics and Tapa is for getting me into Valiant Comics. And I'll actually leave a link down below if you would actually like to see some live play of the system. It's actually a really cool system of becoming a superhero. And if not that, there's also amazing communities who have complete systems that are 100% free. I mean, there are even some complete one shots that are 100% free where people will explain, okay, cool, these are the core mechanics of the game, these are what your players need to do, here are some examples, run with it and see. And with that, a lot of untested systems are completely free that the people are developing. Look at something, for example, like Poker Roll. So basically a Pokemon themed tabletop RPG, completely 100% free off their website. And I'm currently actually running a sort of Poker Roll campaign. I've kind of adapted the rules to basically run my girlfriend through the original Pokemon games, except in tabletop form, seeing as she somehow never managed to play those. And it's great. So I would say also just look at picking up some of those rule sets, finding a one shot perhaps, and running through it. I mean, Drive Through RPG has a million one shots that a lot of them are either completely free or they are pay what you want, where you can choose to pay nothing. I would say that is somewhat unfair to publishers. I would try and encourage you to. If you did, if you are able to and you enjoy their game, your friends got enjoyment out of it, you all had a good fun time, go back and give them something, a dollar, whatever it might be, whatever you can afford, if you are able to. If you're not, I'm sure people will understand, but if you can, support them. Why not? They make great things. This is well, DM's Guild, same story. Also has a bunch of RPGs on it, specifically the some more Dungeons Dragons themed, but they have a bunch of free options you can look in playing. With that again, is also, I would say, there are a lot of systems that are very popular. Of course, Dungeons and Dragons, literally, I think at this point, the biggest, most popular system. Very easy to find one shots. Very, very, very easy to find one shots with pre-gen characters that you can run through. The other thing I would say is that is really easy and actually not as user friendly as you would think is once again Call of Cthulhu. I know it's a more niche setting and pick for a lot of people, a lot of people don't like a setting, but in your quick start rules it comes with the haunting. Haunting is actually a pretty little, pretty cool little story. I won't ruin it too much if you guys do want to look again into it or even want to try to convince a friend to DM, GM, keep, whatever it might be. And a really cool little story. I actually ran it through with some friends last week, if I'm not mistaken, and everyone was having a fun. And it's pretty simple. Pretty simple story, pretty straightforward. Very helpful for new keepers and very helpful for new players as well. There is an investigation that's basically, I'll set up the premise, there's basically you hired to investigate this house that's had a whole bunch of bad things happen to it over the history. Landlord wants to rent it out, wants you to figure out what the problem is, wants your PCs to figure out what the problem is, wants, you to, wants them to solve it. 
pretty simple premise, pretty well done, and it's 100% free. And with that, it doesn't have pre-gen characters, but quite literally, Google. Google's your friend. I googled Call of Duty pre-gen characters, came up with a website, had a whole bunch. Literally, they had fillable PDF forms. I will try to find the website and actually link them down in the description below for different errors. And emailed them off to my friends, played with those. Perfect, no issues, didn't shog at all. Because, to be honest, one of the most daunting things is for new players to create your character from scratch. They don't understand how your system, how this system works. They don't understand the implications. They don't understand that everything goes behind these choices. They're not going to be very interested. They're not going to understand the implications. They're not going to understand what it means. Put this, so they're not going to understand the mechanics. We're like, oh, I want to be a fighter. Cool. But you, Alec, your strength is eight. For those that don't play DD, that is terrible. You should never make a fighter with strength of eight because you're primarily strength based. Your weapons. They don't understand the correlation. They don't understand that, hey, I'll be a fighter. So my strength needs to be half. So it's like, oh, look, your strength is half. Why? So you do more damage. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that means nothing. Don't make new players make new characters. And with that, I want to talk about how to try to get your friends into it. Now, personally for me, one of the ways I got into it, or most of got into it, but actually got interested in it was, to be honest, it's a very weird situation, but the TV show community, they had, I think, two D&D themed episodes where, for story reasons, they ran games of D&D that were not very descriptive, didn't really have much to them, but it wasn't necessarily the folks that episodes be like, hey, this is how D&D works, play D&D. But they were really cool and they actually got me interested in understanding what D&D is and about this whole tabletop RPGing thing. I thought, hey, you know what, that's pretty cool. Let me do the next thing. And at that stage, I didn't really have friends or groups or anything. But that's it, I wasn't even going to these board game days. So I thought, you know what, I want to know more. Let me go to YouTube. And I did. Went to YouTube, millions of options came up. So being the person I am, I decided, cool, I'm gonna have a Google, find out what my best options are. And when you Google, undoubtedly the first result that will always come up of when you ask what DD stream to watch, what is the best DD stream, is Critical Role. And it is a show that I have watched the entire of the first season first campaign through and i'm currently busy somewhat with the campaign i did kind of get burnt out slightly on critical role and i might be sacrificed to some people but i basically watched the entire first campaign in maybe two months and then jumped straight into the second campaign and it was a lot it got me slightly burnt out on their style of play the D system and the way that they interact with each other now, the one thing I would say is never show your friends Critical Role. Never try to link them to Critical Role. Never try to show them what Critical Role is when you're trying to convince them to get into D&D. Now, I know some people are freaking out like, how can I not show them the best option there is? And the truth is, when I did first search that option of what D&D seems to watch and I turned on Critical Role, I was so taken back. There was so much story. They were so passionate. There was voice acting. It was just so much to take in, it freaked me out. I was not looking at, hey, these are normal people playing d and I was like, these are guys that have given up hours of their lives, like tens, hundreds of hours of their life that have changed and become such great players. It is, it's just overwhelming, it was so much. I instantly stopped watching after maybe like 15 minutes because there was backstory, there was this, there was that, there was this. It was just too much for me to take in, too much for me to understand how the system worked, how the players worked, what was happening, who each person was. It was insane. With that being said, it is still probably the best D&D show, the most realistic, the most passionate, the most greatest to watch, but not for a newcomer, not for someone who has no idea what is happening, not for someone that doesn't understand anything about D&D. So to be honest, what I did then was did a bit of searching through other things and a lot of other options came up. 
But what I ended up watching was Heroes and Halfwits. Now, for those of you that don't know, what, I'm assuming most of you won't know what Heroes and Halfwits is. It is an achievement hunter D and D show. They no longer make it, but it actually got me into achievement hunter. Weirdly, and not the other way around. Most people watch achievement hunter and start watching Heroes and Halfwits. I did the opposite way around, and I'll actually link the playlist down below because it was normal people. It wasn't people that were voice acting. It wasn't people that were professionals. The DM made mistakes. He stuttered. He struggled. He wasn't this flawless, perfect Matt Mercer that nailed every story beat, every emotion, every character perfectly. He was a normal person sitting there playing D&D for what seemed like normal people that were his friends. Often, more often than not, they wouldn't be talking to the characters they were playing, but would be Markle or Ryan, not the characters. And that for me was great. It showed that these normal people were having fun. They didn't need to be these superstars. They were just playing and enjoying it. And for me, that is one of the greatest ways to get your friends is to show them a rather low budget, not only low budget in terms of low funded or low money spent, but a bunch of normal people who aren't absolutely amazing at what they're doing. They aren't Matt Mercer's, they aren't Matt Colville's. They aren't Chris Perkins, they aren't these amazing DMs with absolutely flawless stories, with absolutely flawless performances. They are just normal people who are kind of like, mm, yeah, uh, sure, you do that, I want, uh, ooh, um, yeah, I don't know, um, I guess, maybe, sure, ooh, uh, yeah, I don't know, there's this, um, you want to speak to someone, yeah, um, there, there's this person, yeah, yeah, him, Jim, yeah, there's Jim. People who aren't perfect and that seems so much more approachable for especially new players they can sit down and watch and be like ah this is funny these guys are talking to each other they enjoying themselves maybe it could be something worth getting into and that i would say is one of the big ways again is if you are looking to your friends and your friends are willing to be like hey i'll have a look you know is there anything i can watch maybe or you can even just suggest hey look i want to play D&D. Check out Heroes and Halfwits, please. Here's a link. Watch 20 minutes. Think we would enjoy it. It just comes through. And often than not, some of your friends might watch it. A lot of people will be like, I'm rather going to watch this video than just coming straight through and not knowing what to expect. And it makes it seem fun. It makes it a lot more approachable than you tell them to watch Critical Role because they're not going to get a Critical Role, let's be honest. Another way I would also say is if they are intimidated by perhaps Dungeons and Dragons, would be to look at perhaps starting them off on Dungeons Dragons Light or an RPG Light kind of board game where there are characters, there are stats, you roll for things, there's necessarily a GM, there's necessarily a strict story, more we lay out game boards, we've got pieces on the game board and you roll for stats. So stuff like that that I would say is great is a lot of the fancy flight stuff. If you look at stuff like Mansions of Madness, and especially, I would say, the current Lord of the Rings game done by uh, Fantasy Flight are great because they have no DMs or GMs, it's all run by an app. So you load up the app and a person will generally read what the app tells you guys to do, or telling you guys to do, the app kind of plays for the monsters, kind of, if you will. And it allows you to play with your friends instead of across them and gets them onto the idea of playing a character where you're rolling for them, you're creating, where you have stats, where you have to move only certain amount of times, you can only certain things in certain turns, you have investigation, you have this and that and that. And it's kind of a nice hybridization of not being, we playing D&D, we playing this RPG system that freaks people out. It's kind of a lighter version and, you know, play around like, hey, I feel like, oh, you know, that people enjoy it, but like, oh, you know, but we can run this Call of Cthulhu, this D&D game poker roll, whatever it might actually be that you have an interest in playing and play it through and they more or less understand the mechanic behind it. I don't understand what your dice do and why we're running a D20, why we're running a D100 and what all of that is. They understand that my character has stats and I have to roll to try and accomplish a task. That basic concept is what these games instill and their basic decision making as that character, which is great. And then once again, just bribing games, always also an option. And this time, I don't think it's as simple as, well, it is kind of as simple as, hey, come to my place, 
let's go to your place. I've got this thing. Let's try it out. I'll bring the beer. I'll buy the pizzas or, you know, whatever it might be. And while some of you are like, hey, why not? Sure. But there's also a second option. And when I say trying to get your players into it or getting your friends into wanting to be players is there are so many systems out there look for an RP that they enjoy. If it might be, for example, you know that your friends are huge Star Wars fans, look for a Star Wars RPG system, like Pokemon fans, look, like a po look for a Pokemon system, Fallout, whatever it might be, there are millions of systems out there. And often, more often than not, there will be a system for almost any RP, whether or not it's official or whether it's fan-made. Just because it's fan-made doesn't mean it's bad. A lot of them are just as well-made as a lot of these professional systems that people get published. There are some great ones out there. So read through it, see if you understand it, see if you can make it, see if you can make make up about how to play it. But more often than not, the only issue with using one of those systems, if you're not well versed about how DM is the story. You won't find a lot of you won't find a lot of online pre-made uh, stories for you to play through pre-made adventures or pre-made one shots. So that's why I would still say if you can try get them into I would say specifically the two that I've had the most success with is D&D &D and Call of Cthulhu for finding pre-made adventures and pre-gen characters with fairly simple, easy to run, first timer adventures for both GMs, DMs and players. And then with that as well, of course, like I touched on earlier, there's obviously your digital play options. Also look into those. If you know you're not gonna get any friends into it, if you've tried, you can't, just look into the digital play options. Once again, approach your board game. Look, approach your board game shops, your local gaming stores, whatever it might be. They'll generally be more willing than to help. And a lot of them probably already run evenings where they host these RPG days or where, oh, does one person started playing an RPG day on a Wednesday? Or RPGs on Wednesday? So does this other person, so does this person, so does that person. And for them, more often than not, they look to capitalize on things like that by, oh, yeah, I'm, Oh, you guys are playing Dungeons Dragons. Oh, yeah, we have the entire set of everything right over there. You know, maybe offer even a discount, whatever it might be. Gaming stores are still business at the end of the day. They want to build a community, they want to look for friends, but they also look to capitalize on building community for themselves and that for that to turn into sales. Often not any of these good ideas, they will look at running. They might publicize them like shit, so just ask. And even then, if you know a local game store might have some of these options or no local game stores owners that don't offer them perhaps just speak to them and ask about offering them like hey have you ever thought about doing this maybe we can let's see and more often than not if they are already open during those times and there's a possibility for them to make some extra cash out of it money's a bit convincing when trying to run a, a bit convincing when trying to run a business so just speak to them and see some places might be like hey that's actually a great idea Let's reach out to the regulars. Maybe they'll put out a post and see if they get a response. And from there, they might start doing things like that. So don't be scared to approach your game stores and speak to them in the right way. Don't tell them, hey, you should do this. Be like, hey, this could be a cool idea. What do you guys think? You know, obviously you can then sell paraphernalia attached to it, perhaps even market it for those things. So if you had been running a D&D &D day, um, for example, local game store of ours, on their RPG days, you get a discount on all RPG peripherals. So they sell your dice, your dice trays, books, maps, paper, well, not map paper, not normal. Paper. You give that at a slight discount because they know they're gonna probably make more sales. And even then, one thing could also be looked at is doing a lump sum. So hey, what's the ticket to enter for this day that we've arranged? This is another option. If they arrange it from their side, you might be looking at paying a ticket, but it's normally not a match. But hey, you're paying for this ticket. With this ticket, you get an entrance. But hey, if you buy this ticket, you get a set of dice. From these to pick perhaps you know cheaper options. You pay this price, you get a set of dice or maybe a PHB, or you get something to go along with you. But anyway, I'm getting slightly off point now. So back on point, I'd just like to say, getting involved and getting started isn't as difficult as people think. And I think the big point is like where they really want to get involved in actual board gaming 
and card gaming and that kind of gaming, or whether it be your actual tabletop RPGs, is your first biggest point of contact, ask your local gaming store. If they don't offer it, perhaps you might into offering it, and if they're really not interested, they might just know who does run it. They might say, oh, you know, but you know what, we don't, but that store 20, 15, 20 minutes away runs it. Speak to them. At the end of the day, people are more willing to help. If not, approach online communities. More often than not, you will find articles about very similar topics, very similar ways to get involved, and very similar people in your area looking to the same thing, and people will have ways for you to get involved. If you're looking for your friends to get involved, just ask. Often I'd be like, hey, look, if you want to try this, will you just please come with me? People just do it as a favor. If not, bribery and corruption. They do like, look, I'll pick up your drinks for the day. I'll bring a six pack. I'll bring the snacks. And often enough, people just be like, yeah, yeah, you know what? We friends. Because more often than not, if it's something that interests you, your friends generally say, share similar interests if you hang out with them in your free time. They would be interested too. So just approach them and ask. And guys, I think that's a lot of information to take in. If you have any more information that I've missed or possibly you know of any venues that offer these options, please put them down in the description. In the description. Please put them down in the comments below. Just let people know, hey, where you are, what this place is, what days they offer it. If you perhaps host games online, please, by all means, Put your link down in the comments below. Let people know, hey, I offer Dungeon Dragons for newcomers on a Monday and Thursday on Roll20. I want to start a new campaign looking for players. Let's just be an interactive community for people to get involved and let's all help each other. If you do have any questions, please put them down in the comments below. If I do have an answer for you, I will look into it. If I don't, someone else has an answer, please, by all means, answer it. But most of all, guys, just thank you so much for watching and... These guys, all those YouTube things, they really do help more than you could ever know. Like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. And if you are interested in any of my gameplay stuff, I am starting to do live streams on Mixer. So please also give me a follow there, please. That out. If you would like and just join there and we can chat. But most of all guys, just thank you so much for taking time out to watch this video. And I hope to see, hope to see you guys in the next session.